Uh, shalom. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you for, for having me uh, visit today. Thanks to Wikimedia Israel and thanks to, uh, um, to, the, uh, to the school for, for hosting this conference. So can everybody hear all right? Is this, is this okay? Okay. Um, I have, uh, I'm gonna try to not, not speak too long. Um, I've got about, about 40, 40 minutes or so, okay. I tested it last night to see if we could do this. Uh, so I work for the Wikimedia Foundation, which is the, the organization based in the United States that um, operates, uh, technically speaking, operates the servers and the infrastructure that uh, bring you Wikipedia and its sister projects. Um, and today I wanted to talk a little bit about um, a couple of topics that are relevant and interesting to me. Um, and and I, I missed my introduction, but I, I, I will just reiterate that my role at the Wikimedia Foundation is, is specifically uh, leadership in communications, public relations uh, within the organization. So I get to work with the folks from the chapters around the world, uh, and I get to talk about Wikipedia all the time. Uh, I've been with the organization for about uh, five years, um, and I spend most of my time talking to journalists and uh, folks from around the world and working with our, our community to talk about Wikipedia. So today I want to talk a little bit about the history, uh, about how Wikipedia came to exist, um, about what the, some of the numbers within our, our movement in our world. Um, I'm going to go backwards. Oh, so I see I'm looking at one ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about contribution to Wikipedia. There are many Wikipedians here today, editors of Wikipedia. Yes, a few. Excellent. Good. So you will point at me when I'm making a mistake and tell me when I'm making a mistake. I'm looking at you. You tell me when I'm making a mistake. I'm actually not a Wikipedian, which is an important first thing to state. Um, because I work for the organization, I tend to make decisions to sort of avoid getting highly involved in Wikipedia. Um, sometimes that's good and sometimes that's not very good. Uh, people have been ha had a lot to say about Wikipedia since it was first created in 2001, January 2001. And it's actually a wonderful project to be associated with because although a lot of people have tough questions about Wikipedia and complicated things to say about Wikipedia, they also have really wonderful things to say about what, what Wikipedia represents. Um, and some very smart and respectable people. Wikipedia shouldn't be, and encyclopedias in general shouldn't be really simple and easy things. They should be kind of crazy. They should, be, they, should, they should break the rules. They should do things that are a little bit more unexpected. And I think Wikipedia very much falls into that category. So I'll just run through some, some numbers. And folks, if I'm speaking too quickly or if you'd like me to slow down, just raise your hand and yell out, tell me to, to, do, to do that. Wikipedia globally around the world uh, is the fifth most visited website uh, on the planet. It's been this way for about three years, um, which is uh, a pretty extraordinary fact. Above Wikipedia, you have Facebook. Thank you. What else? Google. No, not Twitter, not yet. Close. No, you have uh, Microsoft, um, and you have Yahoo. Yahoo is still a very big, you know, Yahoo is still a top five website. What's that? What? Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Um, but it's kind of exciting. Oh, it has my timing. It's kind of exciting, though, that um, a general knowledge project is the fifth most visited site in the world. Like, I'm, I'm personally very excited by that. I think that's a very exciting and good thing. There's no ads. It's not a commercial property. It's a property that belongs to every person who accesses Wikipedia and engages with Wikipedia. I love that world. I like the, I like the fact that that's true. So this, this number is based on um, a, a web measurement company called Comscore, which some of you are probably familiar with. It's the number of unique visitors who, who come to our site, who come to the sites of the Wikimedia Foundation. So 473 million, um, that's a pretty extraordinary number. Um, the truth is our servers register about uh, somewhere along the lines of 13 or 14 billion page requests every month on our project. So page requests are different from these numbers, but our own servers generate this extraordinary amount of, of, uh, of access to Wikipedia. 
and it's not, uh, an, it's not an English project, it's not just a French project, it's not just a German project, it's a project in 285 languages currently. We, I had to update this because in the last month it was 282 and now it's 285 languages. Um, so it is by far one of the most fundamentally multilingual projects uh, in history, and certainly on the web. This is a, a kind of a, a, brag, a brag slide. I don't like to show this, but it's, it's interesting. I don't have a, a laser pointer, but um, we're, we're looking here at uh, other content projects, other sites that do news or do general information content like New York Times, CNN. Uh, these are mostly English because we wanted to look at ones with very high traffic numbers. And, and this is where they live. And this is Wikipedia. So I, I don't need to do a lot of explaining around this. And it's not intended to say we're, we're so great, but it is intended to say this is an extraordinary thing. I mean, there are not a lot of websites that are focused on sharing knowledge on the internet. And this is, this is sort of the one space. And it's been continuing to rise from when we started, which was somewhere probably around 100 million unique visitors up to uh, close to, to 500 to half a, half a billion unique visitors. And then uh, the volunteers, of which we have a few here of this number. Um, about 85,000 active volunteers across all of our projects around the world. That's um, active is people who edit at least five times per month. <laughs> month per month. So they make individual changes to Wikipedia. This is, uh, for, the, for the vast majority, and I think this is a very safe thing to say, these are unpaid volunteers. We, just, we certainly don't pay them. The Wikimedia Foundation doesn't pay, the chapter doesn't pay folks. These are volunteers who are engaged in that. Go, go, go. Um, and this is something that I would really like to point out, that people often presume that Wikipedians come from a specific demographic or a specific place. They're from all walks of life. They are retired. Um, they are academics, they are teenagers, um, they are octogenarians, they are older people, they are younger people. Uh, I have seen a, an absolute, there are men and women, although they tend to more often be men, but they are literally from every possible part of the world. And then we have our chapters, of which Wikimedia Israel is, is one of our, our very active, wonderful chapters. Um, these are other grassroots organizations around the world that have been formed to support this, this community. Uh, in many different ways. And that number continues to grow, although we wish it could grow faster. Um, but these are, these are organizations that are critical to, to the support of our projects. Now this is just looking at the Wikimedia Foundation, um, 110 staff members, which is actually um, a fairly small number, but it's also a fairly big number. When I started working at the foundation, we had uh, uh, about eight people, and that was about five years ago, so we've grown from about eight to 110. The majority of these individuals work in technology and software development uh, and engineering operations. Yeah? Are they 130 That's correct. Um, within, within the Wikimedia Foundation, so in some of the chapters there are a few employees as well. But it's, it's a small number, but uh, it continues to rise. Now compared to the other top 10 websites, this is very insignificant. I mean, we're talking about organizations with tens of thousands of employees. And then this is, this is a question that, that we get on a, on a pretty regular basis, not from folks within our community of volunteers within the Wikimedia community, but like who, who is actually in charge of all this stuff? Who makes the decisions about what actually gets to be within the project? Um, the, work, the thing that I wanted to make really, really clear is that this is an organization that supports these projects. So we're, we're engaged in uh, working with our chapters to empower this community of volunteers around the world, but we're not actually the ones making the decisions about what you're seeing on Wikipedia. Um, that's a much more complicated process. Um, people often think there's one, one person in charge of Wikipedia, like who's the senior editor? I'd like to talk to who's in charge. Well, it's actually a really complicated answer. Everybody's in charge, and you're in charge. Whether you're Wikipedian or the reader, everybody is engaged in this, in this question. We do operate a legal framework to protect Wikipedia, but we're not actually specifically in charge. Uh, and I just have some general, some general thoughts that I want to share about Wikipedia, and then we'll, we'll go into some specifics about um, the kind of the, the, the policy background for how these decisions, about Wik how Wikipedia kind of happens. Um, the thing that, that I think is really important, a lot of people don't realize, and I think everybody here probably does by now, but that it's a completely nonprofit uh, enterprise, it's a charitable, uh, a charitable, charitable enterprise that's focused on, 
uh, not on making lots of money, but on, on supporting a global mission. And a lot of people don't know that Wikipedia has, because they look at Wikipedia and they see this article, uh, and they see, oh, that's great, but they think it's kind of done. But the truth is there's an extraordinary amount of structure and culture behind the creation of every Wikipedia page. I'll hopefully scrape through a little bit of that very quickly. Before I go into the kind of the meaty part of this discussion about the five, I'm going to talk about the five pillars of Wikipedia, which the Wikipedians will probably recognize um, because it's a great way to describe where we come from. We're not an advocacy platform. We're fierce believers in uh, non-censorship. Um, there's no advertising in Wikipedia. This is a very important word. These are, this is just kind of a group of, a grouping of words, but um, Wikipedians take the question of notability incredibly serious. And I'll refer to Wikipedians, not myself or, or the institution, because it's really I'm talking about what Wikipedians do. Um, to give you a sense of, of why and how decisions are made. So the, 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 these, these are the five main um, decision, kind of the, well, the pillars, the five pillars of Wikipedia. Now, Wikipedians will know that sometimes these pillars are talked about within our projects, and sometimes they're not necessarily used to, to discuss the decision-making process, but they're actually pretty safe, safely, safe to say core to almost all of our language projects, although some of them, Hebrew Wikipedia, may in fact have some of their own variations on this. Um, but the truth is, these are kind of the big ideas behind it. So I'm going to break these down pretty quickly, um, because these are all, all on Wikipedia, and you can read about them. Sort of to figure out why, why some of these points are important. And again, these are, these are the five things that I talk about when I'm talking to, to journalists, to the media, to other organizations to help them understand Wikipedia. So this is really interesting. I think the term Wikipedia has become so synonymous that we've forgotten that at the core of what Wikipedia is, is the question of, is the idea that it's an encyclopedia. We, we don't think about encyclopedia as much anymore, but the truth is Wikipedia is an encyclopedia, and as such, it has a specific focus on general knowledge. It's not a whole bunch of stuff. It's an encyclopedia. And, and actually, people, I think people have thought that, thought that Wikipedia has transformed the idea of an encyclopedia, which is true. But there, what is an encyclopedia still is an important question if you want to understand why and how different activity takes place within the projects. It's not a newspaper. It's not a political uh, space. It's not a, an exercise in democracy. I love that one. An experiment in democracy. This is probably the most important point in, in, in understanding the way that Wikipedia works, which is that it, it, it is written from a, a neutral point of view. I apologize for this wall of text, but it, it is actually um, sort of the most succinct way to describe what happens within our projects. Uh, that, that individuals who get involved in Wikipedia are doing so because they care about Wikipedia and they care about the project and the mission is so critical to understanding Wikipedia. They're not there for one thing. They're there to participate and make Wikipedia a better project. Um, and that is, in many ways, neutral point of view is such a critical aspect of understanding why and how people are engaged within the project. The, the, word, the word that's really important on this, um, on this slide for me, the, the fact that Wikipedia is an encyclopedia, anyone can edit, is free. So Wikipedia is free content. That's both uh, a licensing issue that people would understand I hope that it's freely reusable by other institutions and organizations. Um, but, but more importantly, it's free, so like you don't really own the article that you're working on. You have to understand that your contributions are intended to be improved upon, are intended to be changed, updated. Uh, and as this says, this is directly from the pillar, mercilessly edited and redistributed. Um, people don't come to Wikipedia to make their own article and expect it to stay that way. People participate because they expect the articles to change and to improve. This is, uh, you know, we, uh, that editors should interact with each other in a respectful and civil manner is, is also important to understand if you're coming to Wikipedia for the first time that, th that there are norms of good behavior within Wikipedia and that civility, and this is my favorite, my favorite one here, uh, this notion of assume good faith is very, very central to the success of Wikipedia. Jimmy Wales, when he created, uh, when he sort of brought forward the idea of Wikipedia, he really, he talked about this a lot. To this day, he still talks about this notion of assumption of good faith, which means that the people who are doing something, if you're, if you're editing an article and someone else comes along and makes changes to your article, it's worthwhile to assume good faith that something 
good is going to happen, that they're there to make the article better, not that they're there to make the article worse or that they're there for their own ego or whatever the case may be. Um, folks may argue that that's not necessarily always true in Wikipedia, but uh, assumption of good faith is so core to understanding um, why people are allowing us, because it's an open project, anybody can edit it, so you have to have some norms, like assume that that person's doing something good. And then for all these four sort of rules and policies, I love that the fifth one is that we don't really have any rules. But that's not really true either. I think any Wikipedian would argue that there are in fact lots of rules and norms and policies. The idea though that there's more behind the rules in the policies than just the actual literal wording is what, what I like to, to, to stress on this. When, uh, when the first folks started editing, creating, when they created Wikipedia and they started working on Wikipedia, they were breaking a rule, like they were, they were com completely changing the idea behind uh, encyclopedia, where normally you had people who were approved editors who came in and wrote the encyclopedia and then it was published. They changed that norm and they said, well actually, what if everybody could get involved in that? So Wikipedia is really born in this notion of disruption and this notion of changing the rules, of questioning the rules that are behind all things, which is actually a really useful history for us to have because it forces us to think about that. At the foundation, I have to think about that all the time. Whenever, whenever we find ourselves saying, well, we should, put, we should make this a rule or we should make this a process, we're like, as soon as we do that, we're going to question our own rule, we're going to question our process, and that's actually not such a bad thing. So just to, just to recap on those really quickly, this is the sort of the heavier part of this presentation that I wanted to kind of move through, hopefully not too briskly. These are all on Wikipedia. I'll have some links at the end. So I wanted to, to point out a couple of simple ways, if you're new to Wikipedia, and I know some folks here are probably relatively new to this experience, that beyond what you see here on, uh, on an average Wikipedia page, I wanted to direct your attention to two things, because you might have spent thousands of hours reading Wikipedia. It wouldn't be surprising to me to hear that. But you may not know about these two really important links on any given page. For Wikipedians, this is absolutely obvious to them. But one is this link in the top left corner called POC, uh, and this is the same on any given language version of Wikipedia. And the other corner is the history tab. I'm also very interested, in, of course, in the edit tab, but we won't go into too much detail. And I'm not going to show you how everything on a page works. But these are two really interesting things. This is an article. This is a recently uh, a very accurately edited article about uh, Ray Bradbury making the rest in peace. So if you click on the top link on the upper left corner, and I've got a couple slides of this page, this is where the conversation about the article about Ray Bradbury and every single article on Wikipedia for the most part, this is where the conversation is unfolding about the actual article itself. So this first part is not particular. this is an important part, it actually links to, it shows you there's a very large discussion going on about this article. But then here's the first section, the kinds of conversation that, is, that are going on behind every article uh, are relating to every issue you can imagine about whether or not this article should be part of the deaths in 2012 article. Uh, various links are being, these are, these are, these are, this is input coming from the community of Wikipedians from around the world. Um, very thoughtful uh, discussions relating to the critical reception. This is one, there are probably 10,000 words written on the talk page about the Ray Bradbury article. And everything that's taking place on Wikipedia is sort of being discussed. Maybe not everything, but large important issues are being discussed on the, on the, the talk pages. And then on the other side, you have this history, history section, so on that top right corner. I always point journalists and other folks who are new to Wikipedia or have seen a lot of Wikipedia but don't really know what it means to this page, because it's not evident when you look at this that every single, every single change that's been made to this page is publicly available and visible. So when you click on the history page, you get something like this, which if you've ever used Microsoft Word or you've ever used a word processor that sort of shows all the individual changes that have been made to the document, this is the same version of that. Um, this is the date that the article, this is the date that the individual change was made. This is the user or editor who made that change. This is a IP string. I guess these are gonna start getting longer now that we're in the world of IPv6. This is an anonymous user. Uh, and then they're writing a description over here about what they actually did. So this was a robot, but this is a reversion. Um, this was a, a, a statement about one of the stories that he wrote. So this is the first page of the history tab. 
up to 10th of June 2012, yesterday. And then this is the very end of the history page. This is the creation of this article at uh, 1225 Universal Time, the 2nd of November 2001. So the Ray Bradbury article was created in the 2nd of November 2001 by an anonymous editor. I don't actually know what the X's mean, but this was somebody at the very, very early days of Wikipedia who created the article on Ray Bradbury. There's a lot of science fiction fans in Wikipedia, so this doesn't surprise me, but that's a very old article relative to the millions and millions of articles on Wikipedia. And you can go back and look at every single, every single version of that page from the beginning uh, and see each and every one of those changes. This is true of every article on Wikipedia. So the, uh, the inspiration for, for why people are involved in this project is, is um, really rooted, I think, in the, in the notion of what it means to be a good citizen of the internet and what it means to be someone who cares about this idea of general knowledge. And I wanted to move from that general information towards sort of a, are you think, and I don't know how many people in the room are thinking about editing Wikipedia or considering the participation in Wikipedia, but I wanted to sort of provide some, some thoughtful direction. I want, I'm hoping that if you're going to join Wikipedia and get involved, you're gonna get involved to support the project on a large scale not make maybe just to do one small thing. So I wanted to talk about this for a, a quick second. Whether you're a, uh, perhaps somebody who works in communications or marketing or public relations, I work in those fields, um, you might have yourself, you might face the question of whether or not you want to get involved in Wikipedia to, to support one specific topic. Um, sometimes people don't like what they see in Wikipedia. Sometimes they know somebody who's involved in Wikipedia. They want to sort of make a change to, to affect the way the article looks. Um, I'm gonna take a couple seconds to talk about this idea because if you remember from the earlier part of this, the question of neutral point of view is very important and then you may in fact find yourself um, faced with the topic of am I actually neutral point of view oriented in this. This is a very big public issue in the world. The press really likes to talk about I'm sure you've probably read stories like this. This is from the BBC. Um, the, the press really likes to explore this notion of whether or not Wikipedia is being edited by earnest, honest people or whether it's being edited by people who are uh, closely associated with the topic, who may have heard in fact work for a company like Bell Pottinger, which is a, a big public relations firm in London. I'd like people to avoid finding themselves in this kind of situation because it's potentially quite messy and difficult if on behalf of someone else you've edited an article uh, and then that becomes the news instead of supporting the kind of people that you're trying to talk about. Um, the, if, you're, if you're part of an organization, uh, you can certainly get involved uh, in Wikipedia and we want everybody to feel like they can be involved in Wikipedia in every possible way. Uh, if you have one reason, and I'm gonna come back to this in a second, but if you have one reason to get involved in Wikipedia, you probably may, you may want to think about taking a little bit more time and understanding Wikipedia a little bit better before you come in and take part in it. Uh, we can find people to help you fix your problems. There are Wikipedians who want, I'm sure that the folks here who edit Wikipedia have at some point or another helped someone edit Wikipedia and think about the ways to get involved in it. Um, but you can't necessarily have articles on Wikipedia about your organization, about yourself or your entity just because it's there. It's not, that's not what Wikipedia exists for. It is, does not exist for you to be able to use it for the purposes that you want. It exists for the purposes of what society is looking for, what we're all looking for in terms of information. So I'll come back to these ideas towards the end, but I wanted to segue very quickly into this topic. It's moving forward. That's okay. So uh, to, to talk a little bit about the kind of community that makes the decisions about whether or not articles exist, uh, do, do people know anything about this topic yet? I'll, I'll go into some detail about it. SOPA is the Stop Online Piracy Act. I see a hand in the back. Um, some folks would have been familiar with a Wikipedia blackout that took place um, in January. As, a, as an act that our community uh, undertook, I think it's a, it's a pretty big part of our recent history. So I wanted to take a couple of seconds to describe what that meant. This is what that was about. On on January 18th, this was the version, this was the screen that you saw on English Wikipedia uh, instead of regular Wikipedia. So does, any, did, does anybody have recollection of this event taking place about the blackout? If you edit Wikipedia, I know that you certainly do, great. <laughs> this was really hard to do. <laughs> this is a really difficult thing to do. Um, we, uh, 
at the Wikimedia Foundation, we're faced with seeing our community talk about this very toxic piece of legislation. So this is the piece of legislation in the United States. It was the Stop Online Piracy Act. It was first described by uh, congressional representatives in the US in about uh, October of 2011. In a nutshell, because there's, it's difficult to describe it um, because US legislation, like legislation in many parts of the world, um, is amorphous and it's going to, it's, it's a difficult beast. To put it in a nutshell though, the legislation was being developed by individuals who had a very, shall we say, limited understanding of how the internet works. Um, they wanted to basically control the way that information flows around on the internet. Projects like Wikipedia don't work if national governments can determine whether or not someone can edit the project if they're in this project or this, this part of the world. If you're in this part of the world, you may not be able to contribute. At the end of the day, we're talking about the way that the internet is structured and this legislation was very much going to shut down um, the basic free flow of information without going into too much detail. Uh, it is intended to, to prevent the piracy of software in, in other Hollywood movies and so on, but it goes far, far further. And it's not gone. Um, so this was the, the, this was the page that was developed at the, at the request of Wikipedians from around the world um, to, to act. And this is sort of how we got there. There were a lot of different Wikipedia discussions taking place saying whether or not we should take action, but there was no, not a lot of history for Wikipedians to actually take this kind of action. When your project is devoted to the sharing of global information, you don't spend a lot of time talking about how to shut down your project, right? You don't spend a lot of time talking about how to not have Wikipedia. You're focused on having it. So what took place is uh, um, a couple of pages were set up, and everybody at Wikipedians will recall Jimmy Wales has a talk page, which is where you can talk with the founder of Wikipedia. Many of you probably have, or some of you probably have. He's very open to that. Um, but they were saying, what are we going to do about this legislation? This legislation could hurt Wikipedia. It's bad. So about 1,800 volunteers were involved in this, which is the most, the single largest discussion on Wikipedia that we, are, that we know of uh, having that level of participation. And then this decision came on January 16th, which is two days before the actual blackout, to, to do this. And our community uh, made a decision and came to us, this small group of folks at the Wikimedia, excuse me, the Wikimedia Foundation said, we'd like you to please um, blackout Wikipedia. Uh, English Wikipedia in the US specifically over the course of the next 24 hours. Um, we weren't the only project that did this. There were, um, uh, there were other major web companies. Google took some measures to put a little stamp on their web page. But the only web page, the only project that really went dark was Wikipedia. It's a very important point. Um, technically speaking, people could work around it, and other people outside of the U.S. may not have experienced it as much, but uh, if you were looking at a different language, but it really happened, and it really was a first time in our history at such a large scale. We also have a, a history of this happening in the Italian Wikipedia um, about a year earlier. So but the question came up and said, what do we do? How do we actually bring about this change? How do we shut down Wikipedia? Why should we do that? Um, and so we were tasked to do that. So this is my boss. Uh, this is Sue Gardner, who was here about two or three years ago. One year, one year ago? No, two years ago. She was here for, in Haifa, Wikimedia. for Wikimedia. She better be here for Wikimedia. Uh, but she was also here for, for this same event, the Wikipedia Academy, a couple of years ago. So this is us in our office um, trying to figure out how to do this. It was about 72 solid hours of work. Not many people got to sleep to actually figure out how to bring about this. You would think it's very simple to actually just put up a screen. Um, the screen itself, the system itself actually was intended have US residents look up the zip code, via their zip code, look up their congressional representatives and figure out what they can do to stop uh, SOPA. Um, but yeah, turning off our project is not something we're particularly good at. It's not something we want to be very good at. We want to actually have more people come. We don't want to have less people come. So it was a very odd moment. Uh, it's kind of like a, a broadcaster figuring out how to turn off the television or turn off radio signals for, for a day. The idea was to, was to get rid of this legislation. The idea was to, uh, to get our readers to contact the representatives and act and to get rid of uh, SOPA and PIPA. This is one of the IRC uh, chat pages that um, was a really critical way for us to communicate with the staff, or with the staff, but also with the volunteers. Because it's critical to keep in mind that it was our volunteers who came to this conclusion. Not everybody agreed. It was a very contested, uh, actual, ultimate outcome. 
And so we did this uh, on January 18th. About 18, about 18, 8 million people looked after congressional representatives. We're pretty sure in the history of the United States of America that there hasn't been a day where more people <laughs> understood who their elected representative was than on this day. Yeah. Yeah, yes. It was done in English Wikipedia across around the entire world. But it was specifically Americans that we wanted to act because obviously non non Americans like citizens outside of the US or people outside of the US couldn't help us defeat this legislation. Both players agreed to meet and do this to meet Canadians They did. My my folk I'm Canadian and my folks in Canada were very we're very disappointed. There was a lot of the funny media coverage was about how, how can we live without Wikipedia? Well, that was actually kind of the question that we wanted to ask people because this legislation could in fact bring about a situation where, where Wikipedia might not work. The message reaches about 180 million people. Um, it's a very, very big news story for the day. Uh, I wish we could have done more to actually bring the story even further, but it was a very busy day for a small organization. And um, ultimately this legislation was not at this moment, not on the day it happened, but it was defeated. Uh, Washington, folks in Washington were telling us that they'd never seen anything like this. They had millions and millions of individuals um, calling up the House, calling up their House offices, the, the, the Congress, and saying, you can't take away the internet, don't destroy the internet, you have to protect the internet. Um, we, ran this, we ran this message, uh, um, so this was the message that went up on January 18th for the whole day, and then on the 19th, which we didn't actually know what to do after we'd be done. We're like, well, just bring Wikipedia back. But we actually wanted to do something meaningful, so this is the message that we worked with some folks, some Wikipedians, and to sort of come up with this very, uh, you know, we didn't know if it would be, we, we, were, we weren't sure what the effect would be until the day after. And then we, we kind of cheeky, we were saying, you know, you melted their servers, but it's true. We actually broke the congressional email system so that Congress people couldn't check their email for the day because that many people tried to contact them. Um, and I don't kind of go over this as, a, as, a, as bragging rights. Um, I want to really point this out as an indication of the power that Wikipedia represents in our society, but also the power that Wikipedians who author Wikipedia have in terms of not becoming an advocacy organization, but in terms of controlling um, in understanding how that power influences uh, internet culture. What I learned from this and what a lot of us who work there learned is that if you've got a, if you've got a powerful community of people who are working on a, on a big idea uh, and they align around that idea, extraordinary things can happen. Um, the, it's, it's safe to say that the U.S. Congress and the United States uh, the entire United States political system has to think differently now about internet legislation because folks are fully aware of the gravity of proposing something that might not necessarily that may not necessarily be good for the internet. This is a historical change in the way things operate in the United States. But as an organization, as the Wikimedia Foundation, or within our movement in general, it wasn't such a matter. It wasn't a matter of us saying, "Well, we're going to do this on behalf of our community." We did every single thing that we could in conjunction with the community of volunteers. So we didn't make the decision at the foundation. Jimmy Wales didn't call us up and say, you're gonna do this. Even our board was reluctant to make that one decision. This is a decision that um, Wikipedians made that we supported, uh, which is a very challenging thing to, to see unfold on Wikipedia. Sopa Pipa is, is gone. Uh, there are now uh, a dozen uh, other proposed pieces of legislation that may have the same effect. So. Congress is very, is very smart, but it's also a, an issue around the world. It's an issue in every part of the planet, I think, where people are talking about ways to control the internet. So I'm gonna wind it down here to, to make some time, hopefully, if you guys have any questions. Um, I, I promised back up here to sort of talk about the notion, sorry, the notion of what it, would, what it, what it means to be involved. Uh, a lot of folks ask if they have to get involved in order to be to be able to influence information on Wikipedia? And the answer is no. So the, the foundation, one of the things that we do that's distinct from um, Wiki, the community of Wikipedians is we're here to try to help people, connect people to uh, ways that you can actually get something done on Wikipedia if you don't want to necessarily get involved. But first of all, it starts with kind of understanding the way that Wikipedia works. Um, 
if you're part of an organization, and so this is explicitly advice to people who are thinking about getting involved but are not sure if they want to, you have to be patient uh, if, you're, if you're considering engaging with the PU. You have to be, um, you have to understand the way that the project works, I think, before you can expect to be successful in, you may say, influencing Wikipedia or getting involved with Wikipedia. Um, this is probably the most, some of the most important advice. And this is really relevant for this room. You know, find a Wikipedia expert. I, I saw some Wikipedians here, and actually the whole Wikipedia Academy, the model is rooted in the idea of bringing people together, Wikipedians and folks who know about Wikipedia, people who are new to Wikipedia. Before you move forward to try to deeply influence the way that Wikipedia works, find somebody who knows what's going on or become one of those people yourself so that you can actually have a deep understanding of the way that Wikipedia works before uh, you try to make changes. And if you're here in this room, you kind of have a responsibility to learn about the way that Wikipedia works so you can bring that back to the people that you work with or the organizations that you're part of. This is a calling. Even if you don't become a Wikipedian, this is an opportunity to understand how Wikipedia actually works. It's incredibly complicated on one level, but it's also very simple and elegant if you're interested in taking the time to understand what's going on. Um, I already talked a little bit about the talk page and history page. Uh, I always like to give out this address, and this, this address, info at wikimedia.org, if you have problems or issues, uh, it, it works in virtually every language. That's a team of about three or 400 uh, active volunteers who are doing customer service work to help people who have issues with articles, issues with Wikipedia in general, or people who want to become involved. So uh, I would encourage you to, to, to write that address down and think about using it. If you have a request and you need help, uh, if, you, if the folks here today can help you, I know the chapter produces, provides some level of, uh, Wikimedia Israel provides some level of support in this, and that, and that we're deeply appreciative to anybody who helps. But you can also use this as a, as a venue to try to engage Wikipedia. And again, to, to really spend some time today, and to spend some time in general, not just looking at Wikipedia as this article, this one page that you read, but to understand the incredibly complex and beautiful process that takes place behind it the work that our volunteers are doing together with each other to provide society with knowledge and information, not to do something for their own benefit, but to do something for your benefit as the reader. And uh, there's a lot more to, to the project than just bringing your own crumb of knowledge, as we say, to the, to the effort. We're really trying to encourage people to understand. There's no question that we need more editors. Um, we need a lot of them, but we need good, engaged, passionate contributors to Wikipedia. We don't need people who come for one thing. We're hoping to make you somebody who wants to engage with the project for many, many years, which is true of almost everybody who edits Wikipedia. So thank you. This is a, a couple of links that I'll leave you with. Um, these are URLs on the, on the top right, obviously, uh, with the five pillars and with some of the, uh, with some of the, with some of the help information. Um, and some more information about the SOAP initiative. Obviously, Wikipedia is filled with information about Wikipedia, which isn't even a joke. It's actually a real thing. I mean, Wikipedia has hundreds of pages about the project itself. Um, but it can be intimidating. So take advantage of some of these shortcuts, but also take advantage of some of the folks who are here today who can answer your questions. Thank you very much, and I uh, appreciate you having me. Uh, now we have time for questions. If you have questions, you can מי שרוצה לשאול שאלות בעברית, אפשר לשאול גם בעברית ואני אתרגם. אוקיי. actually some of the best articles. In fact, on the day of the blackout, there were two pages that we didn't black out in English Wikipedia. One of them was the Wikipedia article about SOPA, um, which was a lesser known fact. And I think the other one was about, uh, was, was this page, was the actual SOPA initiative page so people could understand it. So yeah, there's a good article. Well, can you share the story and we'll have one to walk away. We'll have what, we'll, yes. Yeah, we'll have the to walk away. Yes. And I think, uh, and actually, uh, to, the, to the credit of Wikipedians, um, some of the best work after this page was created, this central page to talk about SOPA, the articles about SOPA, but all of the other related issues became very good because people understood in Wikipedia, if you want the public to understand this issue, you better write a good article. 
So there's actually a great article. I wouldn't be surprised if that article is translated into um, more than 100 languages, that this OPA article, because it is such an incredible example of that work. I think somehow my picture even is in that article. I have nothing to do with it, but um, some of the folks from the foundation are, are referenced in it. Um, and maybe we, may we never need to do it again, right? Like, may we never, ever need to black out Wikipedia again. That's a very good question, and then just to, just to repeat, very, I'm going to make one, one paraphrase, but your question is generally about grappling with the idea of censorship within Wikipedia, and that the, the basic act of removing information may in fact be censorship in and of itself, and then the, the broader perspective that uh, censorship and that this, this actual activity is an act of censorship. So let me talk about that very quickly first. Um, yeah, that was, th advocacy is a very thorny thing. Once you're in it, you're in it. Uh, and that's why this, this, this conversation that unfolded um, is so important because we knew that, I mean, this was, a, this was not a decision that was taken lightly. Even if it's interpreted as an act of censorship or an act of non-neutrality, uh, censorship and neutrality are two wonderful words that I used quite a bit here and are used very often within the community. I think there's a general acceptance that those are very complicated terms. Um, I live in, in San Francisco. Uh, I spend a lot of time in Berkeley, and uh, I bring up the term censorship, or no, I bring up the term neutrality, and people are like, ah, oh, there's no such thing. Neutrality is a myth. I don't disagree with that. I think there's some truth to that. But the, the, the act of um, bringing about the Wikipedia blackout, I think, was, was a question of when you have to understand the very genuine threat to the actual operation of the project. There was, I would not say there was a general agreement to do this. Um, 1,800 volunteers weighing in on a page may not seem like a lot. Um, it is a lot for, for one specific question and topic within Wikipedia. Uh, there was a lot, there were many people who had very thoughtful and passionate arguments against this idea because of that very point. How can we be, a non, how can we support non-censorship when we're going to censor the project? Um, ultimately, uh, and, and the foundation's role was to sort of monitor this conversation and understand when there might be a consensus, or actually it wasn't the foundation, it was um, our board of trustees and, and trying to, at, at one point there was an open uh, request for proposals or sort of a vote, if you will, and uh, someone had to do a count at some point, which is, which is ultimately when that decision was made. So I think the answer, the only answer I can give is that this is not a decision that's taken lightly in any way, shape, or form. Um, and the idea is to never do this again. <laughs> Um, people ask us every single day, and I think Wikipedians hear this too, could you consider blacking out for this topic? Like this is going on right now. Would, if you've got a minute, could you black out about that? The answer is no, we don't. We want to avoid having to do that. If it wasn't, I think if, we, if, this, if this legislation hadn't threatened the very existence of Wikipedia, um, then it wouldn't, we wouldn't have taken it this far. And the general question of censorship, um, I think is, a, is a, an important point that all Wikipedians grapple with. If I'm about to revert this edit, am I censoring this individual? The important point to keep in mind, one of the important points to keep in mind, is that Wikipedians are working with these, these, these and many other principles, but at their core, these principles, to figure out whether or not they're engaging in an act of censorship or whether they're engaging in an act, critically speaking, of making Wikipedia better for the reader. That's the ultimate objective that I think Wikipedians are engaged in. I should think so, yes. But life's principles and Wikipedia's principles are not necessarily the same thing. Um, and I think that's one of the great reasons why Wikipedia exists is because people have made decisions to support Wikipedia, not necessarily to support those ideas. But I, I do, I understand completely what you're saying. To make an article better uh, is really, I think, the, the core me the mission of most Wikipedians. Um, that often means some voices are not welcome in those discussions because those voices are highly, highly prejudiced or have no neutrality in the, in the speaking topic. So complex space. Yeah? How did Wikipedia find out about that one PR agency making many small edits? Like, mm -hmm. just a perpetualized uh, monitoring system. 
Well, we have these. We have every single change ever made to an article uh, is visible in public, right? So this, the short answer is when you edit, you create every single person who edits Wikipedia creates an incredible trail of activity. Um, if you create one account to edit, which I think Bell Pottinger did, um, you create this trail of activity. And I can go back, and this is the beautiful thing. This is why this is such an, if you're really interested in Wikipedia from just a, an experience perspective, go back and look at the history of any given article. And you can click on, so New York Brad, who's actually a, a wonderfully active Wikipedia and a member of the, I think still member of the arbitration committee, you can click on his username, or over here you can click on this link and you can see every single contribution he's ever made with that account. So a lot of people don't realize that that level of transparency exists. So this is a roundabout way of answering your question with whoever was editing on behalf of a PR agency probably just didn't realize that people were paying attention. Um, and the cool thing is, is that Wikipedians are paying attention constantly and they're looking at these sorts of things. So it's very simple to take public information and to analyze those activities and to say, this person has, this, this may be this entity, they have one specific perspective. All they do is edit articles about this one political figure. That's not normal in Wikipedia. Wikipedians tend to edit on all sorts of different topics. So you can tell by, by their public activity. And in some cases when you can't, you can look at their wiki, you can look at these IP addresses, which I think people don't realize how much information is located in that. But that might be the IP address of one specific company that's publicly posted, so you can go, oh. And then you can sort of piece all that together. Uh, and that's how, uh, how it's, it's evident, and it's impossible, in fact, very difficult to hide those activities. So that's how that happens. Um, so is this a cloud that can be just kind of happen, or do editors take over the system, um, or is there someone who's in charge of like fraud and stuff like that? There are teams, I think, well, Wikipedians would be better to maybe to answer some of these questions, but there are, there are in fact, folks that just focus, I didn't come right out and say this, but most of those edits are considered, ultimately considered vandalism. Would, would Wikipedians agree with that? Yeah. That, yeah. Um, those are non, supportive to the project. So there'll be, people are looking to get rid of those edits because they're from non-neutral sources that are generally just advertising for individuals. Or worse, if worse. Removing bad information. Right. R worse is when those entities are taking things out that they don't like on behalf of their clients, like something they said publicly or the fact that they're having a very messy divorce with their spouse. So um, there are folks who specifically look for that. Um, the unfortunate thing, the thing that I, I didn't really bring right out and say this, but all the energy to, to, to combat those issues takes people away from writing new articles. It takes people away from creating new content and, and a, in a big way, right? Like, if, and this is a real issue because Wikipedia could become a project that has to spend way more information, way more time dealing with those kinds of issues than crafting new articles, which is what we're here today, I think, to talk about making, making new articles. So yeah, they, they're, they're, they're on top of this issue, but it takes a lot of time and energy to, to make it work. Right, uh, and if, I mean, if I understand the first part of what you're saying, the, the idea of some, assume good faith is, is um, it's not always followed, yeah. Uh, well, in society we have lots of great ideas and, and, and um, we believe in a lot of things that, that are not always followed. Um, on, the, on the drive over here, I, I could see a lot of drivers on the highway who we hope won't hit any pedestrians or drive over each other, um, but they do. Uh, so that's not, I'm not trying to, to, to back out of what I think you're pointing out, which is that if, if, like, assume good faith is not so much something that you can do every second that you're editing Wikipedia, uh, but it is something that 
in the in the in the in the moment of considering the next step or the action that you might take as a Wikipedia, it's an idea to keep in mind to to prevent a lot of dispute or to prevent those situations. There's no doubt that if somebody wanted to really solve the problem that you're describing, that they could sort of step back and do that. But they don't know it's not always going to take place. So I mean I'll be the in, in, in a lot of Wikipedia's best debates would be done if everybody just assumed that one person was doing something good versus bad. So it's a philosophy. It's not necessarily, unfortunately, actively practiced because uh, I think things move very quickly. But uh, but I will say that um, even in the 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 the, the most intense arguments uh, on Wikipedia, and I guess to some extent I come back to this. This topic was very contentious. SOPA was a very contentious topic. But a lot of people assumed that other people had the right idea. You know, they may not understand US politics, but they wanted to understand the right way to proceed. So assume good faith makes its way across our organization in many different ways. But unfortunately, it's not there every second, unfortunately. Yeah? Now, you talked about the strategy of good faith. But when it comes to political issues, uh, sometimes it's hard to look at the political heard someone say, yes, you can. I mean, it, it, the truth is you can. It's possible. I mean, I, 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 uh, it's just not a unique issue for, for uh, Israel or for Hebrew Wikipedia. This is true of every, every single Wikipedia in every, in every area. I've heard about that, yes. Yeah. Um, with enough time and energy and influence, a group of people can absolutely change and, and could, could absolutely distort the facts of a topic. Uh, the, the only way I could really answer that is, in my experience, true Wikipedians who are focused. I've met Wikipedians, for example, uh, in the United States who are uh, Christian conservatives, who are um, very active, supported leaders within the community, who are very heavily involved in thoughts, thinking around uh, issues that have nothing to do. Like, in theory, I shouldn't trust someone who comes from, a, let's say, a leadership position in a very uh, conservative Christian church. Should I trust their opinion on on gay rights issues, uh, and yet they, they actually are engaged in that topic to try to make the conversation better. If it's working well, and it often does, uh, everybody's focusing on facts. Journalists are highly biased and non-neutral as well. Some of them are definitely, yeah, and they're clearly stating that, and others are in a quest to try to find facts. So Wikipedians, I would argue, are involved in that very powerful quest for facts and information and knowledge, and yes, the likelihood of finding facts is as difficult as questioning neutrality and questioning non-censorship, like what is a true fact and what is a false fact. But I think that what keeps Wikipedians going, and there's some here today that, 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 we're for, that are fortunate to have here, that they're actually engaged in the quest for the best quality facts to help make an article great. Subversion is going to happen, like it's always going to take place. Um, and it's, it's what I think, I think it's partially what draws people to Wikipedia, is the notion of, well, how do I take the article about I'm trying to think of a controversial topic off the top of my head, but I mean, how do I? How do you take any given controversial article and write it? And I'm, I, anybody who likes writing can, has to agree that some of the very best writing in the world is taking place on Wikipedia. When you see a very balanced article about something very complicated, also some bad writing is taking place on Wikipedia. But there's an effort to try, and I, I'm actually really thrilled that when I go to an article that's really controversial, like SOPA, SOPA is a very controversial topic. A lot of people in the entertainment industry hated us for doing that um, and uh, had, very, had very, very direct opinions. But there is a relatively balanced article about those opinions uh, in the English Wikipedia. So balance is really uh, the, core, the core quest. But it's a very good point. OK, we have time for one last question. Um, which one? Your call. No, OK. OK, yeah, yeah. Uh, only to clarify, you said you have uh, 35 global volunteer chapters. And you have Wikipedia in 285 uh, languages. 
of the charter, for example, in India, they write 127 Wikipedia to each and, one, each and every one of the dialects they have in India, or something like this? So it's a, that's a very good question. Um, it's actually a really interesting thing, because some of our chapters, the new chapters are actually city-based. So Wiki, Wikimedia New York is a chapter just in New York. Um, Wikimedia DC is a chapter just in the District of Columbia, Washington DC. Um, and yet we're based in San Francisco and we're not really, the foundation's based in San Francisco, but we're not really a chapter. There's sort of a San Francisco chapter. Uh, so it's actually a, a good thing, in, in my view, chapter folks may have different opinions on this, but that we don't perfectly align with the nationality and the language. Some of our chapters are doing different kinds of work. Um, India is a great example. It's a country that matters a lot to us because there's a huge opportunity to increase the number of editors in India, and there are hundreds of dialects. Uh, so the Wikimedia India chapter is focused on helping support a lot of those uh, those projects, um, but there wouldn't be a chapter for each individual language. So the short answer is that the, the number of languages do not clearly map against the organization of Wikipedia, and, and I think the important point is that Wikimedia chapters um, although they're typically uh, staffed by folks who have edited Wikipedia, sometimes that's the case and sometimes that isn't the case. Sometimes they just want to support the project. Um, uh, they, they, I think they have sort of open arms about, they, they want to bring in all of the different people who are looking to grow the projects in different ways. So for, some, for example, uh, some chapters are engaged in work in 10 different languages. Um, some are just focusing on one language. So it's, and because it's grassroots, it's whatever people want to do. So some chapters are focused on taking pictures uh, and just providing lots and lots of pictures, which is really cool because Wikipedia really needs lots and lots of images for, for lots of articles. And others take a much more different role in supporting internet, uh, freedom of internet and freedom of information. So chapters don't necessarily just focus on, on editing Wikipedia. I wish to, think, uh, to thank Jay for coming here. Thank you.